Hey guys, this is Valentina Palladino from Ars Technica, and today I'm here with Lenovo's new Yoga 910 Convertible. So this is a two-in-one tablet and laptop hybrid, and Lenovo packed in a whole bunch of really high-end features to this laptop. It comes with a 4K display, it has a 13-inch body, but the display is nearly bezel-less, so it's got a 13.9-inch actual display panel, which is pretty cool. And inside of it, you have Intel's Core i7 Kaby Lake processors, you have a redesigned keyboard and a fingerprint sensor. And of course, the yoga convertible type of design, which is unique in itself. So Lenovo really tried to make this as premium as it possibly could, and the price tag definitely reflects that. Our model is the, probably the most expensive model, and it's around uh, $1,600. So I spent some time with the Yoga 910, and we're going to tell you a little bit about the good things and the bad things. So one of the really good things about the Yoga 910 is its design, particularly the hinge. It's Lenovo's watch band hinge. You can see it has different tubes of metal here and then this sort of watch bandy type of hinge right here that goes along the entire edge of it. And this just makes it look unique. It's something that only Lenovo really does with their hinges. It also makes things really sturdy no matter what position that you want to have the convertible in. And it does have a touch screen, so it goes you know, very easily into tablet mode. You can kind of lay it like this. It does not lay completely flat when you put it into complete tablet mode, but there's not a lot of space in between it. And at its thickest point, when it's closed, it's only 15 millimeters thick, which is still pretty thin. So the design is really nice, and it's definitely an upgrade from the Yoga 900 with this all metal body. And again, the watch band hinge is just really nice. It kind of gives the entire device a little bit more personality and it's super sturdy. So for me personally, I really liked the way that it looked, but also that it was very functional. Another thing that I really liked was that there was none of that kind of wobbliness that occurred in the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 with its pull-out hinge, and it also just looks very nice. Another good thing about the Yoga 910 is its display. You can get it in an FHD display, and that will bring down the price a little bit. But really what Lenovo wants is you to get the 4K display, because it's very nice, it's very sharp. The colors are really bold, and it's really just a breeze to use with the touch screen. And because of these um, very thin bezels along the side, it's nearly borderless, and you get a lot more screen space, a lot more space where you can you know, touch and see than you would in a regular 13-inch laptop. I th do think the display could stand to be a little brighter. Even at 100%, I thought it was a little bit just kind of okay with brightness. It wasn't super bright. But other than that, the display is really great. It's awesome when you're watching videos, and it's really good when you're looking at photos and things like that. So if you're a creative professional or you do a lot of video work or video streaming even, the 4K display will be great, especially if you're watching a lot of 4K content. But that does, like I said, up the price to about $1,600. It starts at $1,200. So there's going to be you know, that extra price gap for 4K and also some storage options and some memory options. The final good thing that we'll talk about with the Yoga 910 is its performance and the software. So it does run Windows Home Edition, and with it, it does have a fingerprint sensor, so you can use Windows Hello, the privacy features with your fingerprint, so you can unlock the device using your fingerprint. And it's a nice placement of the fingerprint sensor, just kind of blends in with the rest of the design. And also with the performance of this notebook, it does have the Core i7 Kaby Lake processor in it. And that does help it perform a little bit faster and a little bit more efficiently than a Skylake CPU in another system. Another system that we tried with KB Lake was HP's new Spectre X360, and the Yoga 910 performed very similarly to that one. So it's a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient, but also with KB Lake, you should get a little bit of a performance boost when you are watching uh, 4K content. So the HP convertible does not have a 4K option, at least doesn't have a 4K display that you could get, but Lenovo added that to this, so you can kind of use the KB Lake processor to make your 4K content a little bit better. So let's move on to the not so good things about the Yoga 910. The first issue that I had with it was the exceptionally large bezel or the chin at the bottom of the display. Um, so around the entire display you have very thin bezels, but at the bottom you have this really thick, 
almost 1.25 inch bezel or chin. The reason for this chin is because Lenovo put the uh, 720p webcam at the bottom of the display. And that's kind of an awkward placement for it, but it's not uncommon. There have been other notebooks that put the webcam at the bottom, but there are two problems with that. One, the placement is just not really useful when you're video chatting. That's going to give you a really bad angle. Uh, so hopefully your, you know, your friends and family don't mind kind of seeing up your face <laughs> if, uh, if you're video chatting with them. That means that it's not going to be using any facial recognition features with Windows Hello. So like on HP's new Spectre X360, that uses the webcam so you can use your face to unlock the device. The camera will recognize your face and it'll open up your system for you. But with this, you only have the fingerprint sensor. So, you, you know, with the placement of the webcam, it's not really going to be useful for that kind of thing. Another not so good thing about the Yoga 910 um, is just an issue I had with the keyboard. So this is a redesigned keyboard and most of it is fairly comfortable to use. The problem that I have is that this right shift key is extremely small. Lenovo kind of shrunk it from the regular size shift key that you have here on the left so they could fit in these arrow keys, page up, page down, you know, that kind of thing. And the problem that I have with that is that when I'm typing, you know, I type fairly quickly, I type for most of my day when I'm writing, and I'm right-handed, so I usually go for the right shift key. And most of the time I was hitting the page up button instead, so my text would appear in the, in the line above it, um, and not giving me that capital letter that I wanted. So if you're someone who types a lot and you are right-handed or you just are used to using the right shift key, this kind of might get in your way. I know it did for me. It definitely slowed me down when I was typing. Eventually, I was able to get used to the shift key, but I was still slower with my typing um, than I would be on a regular keyboard. So a minor annoyance on a generally comfortable keyboard, but it's still something that slowed me down. So the final not so good thing we'll talk about with the Yoga 910 is that there are no Thunderbolt 3 compatible ports. So if we close this up, we can look at the side of it and you'll see here you have the power button, a headphone jack, and a regular USB 3.0 port. And on the other side, you have two USB type C ports. And one of them is used for charging, but neither of them are Thunderbolt 3 compatible. And this is kind of, you know, an, a pretty big oversight considering HP's Spectre X360 has pretty much the exact same ports, but both of its USB Type-C are Thunderbolt 3 compatible. It just feels like an oversight when Thunderbolt 3 is becoming more popular and just kind of more widespread. So I really enjoyed my time with Lenovo's Yoga 910. It's a pretty good system. The, you know, the performance is solid with KB Lake. The 4K display is really nice to use. Even with my issues with the keyboard, I would still be able to use it as my daily computer if I really tried. But the problem is, is that, you know, when you can get something like HP's Spectre X360 that's a little bit cheaper, it kind of makes it hard for me to decide if I would buy this myself, just because it is so expensive with the 4K display. Um, like I said before, it starts at um, about $1,200 and goes up to $1,600. So it's definitely one of the more elite notebooks, elite convertibles that you can buy, but I really do like its design. I think the watch band hinge is both functional and very aesthetically pleasing, and that's one of the reasons why I would kind of want to buy this, because it looks it's a very nice looking machine, um, and it works really, really well. So I think if you are someone who really wants to invest in something that's 4K and you're going to use the 4K display a lot, and you don't mind shelling out a little bit extra money, and you also want Intel's most recent processor, uh, this is a really good device to go with. However, if you can kind of forego the 4K and you want to spend a little bit less, you can go with HP's uh, Spectre X360 and be just as happy.